Ready for some advanced carpentry here, Chris? <laughs> All right, so you see this here? See the back here where half inch off the back or half inch in the bottom and full inch on the top. And so I'm gonna make a little molding here, but I don't wanna just push it up against here because then if you saw it from the window back there, then it would look crooked. And so what I'm gonna do is set this up square and describe it and then cut it at the angle of the wall with a jigsaw. And then what I'll do is take a block of wood here like this. I'm gonna make my line and slide this down. Now the wall's super rough here. So I kind of have to do it a section at a time. I got my line that I need to cut with a jigsaw. And then that, this will be vertical, so this will be straight up. And I'll push it into the wall. And that takes, see I've got a, a bigger gap. I need to take more of the wood out because I got a bigger gap on the top. Make sure I can see my line. I'm gonna cut it. A little bit of glue. Beautiful, beautiful. You gotta get a close up of that. That's some. I might have to do a little snipper on that later on. So we'll have to do that. We'll have to put a temporary yeah. underneath, even before the, well, the corbels only, they stop short anyway to the outside edge, right? Well, we're, they'll stop wherever we want to stop it, but they recommend not bringing it at more than an inch past. So what we'll use is a two by on edge, the very edge of the pour, and come straight across to support the, ed, the, the, la, the edge of the hardy. Right, in, in the gaps in between. Well, all the way across, all the way to ground, and then put some kickers in to hold that dead nut level, you know what I mean? That way it's supporting that whole cantilevered over, and then when we pull it, the corbels, will, it'll have hardened, the corbels will hold everything. Yeah. Hardy board, exactly. Hardy board's a cement board. It's like a, it's a backer board or a sub, um, sub base. So we put that down and then we'll pour concrete right over top of that. It's for backer for tile. I think, wouldn't it be easier to put the hardy across the thing and then cut it in place? Not really. I mean, you, how you cut it is, you don't, I know he used a saw, but I always score and snap it like drywall. Yeah. And then four, five, we need five sheets. Is this enough? Um, does this just go from here? It's got to go five on the five foot length. All the way out. Because three's point. only here, so we're going to have to use five this way. So, yeah. Actually, and we got to go around this too. So, really, we need like six sheets. Because we'll split one here one, and do half, half. Two, three, three. And then four, five, five six. six. Yep. Yeah. Six sheets. 63. Yep, right on the money. And, or so it's 31 half. To really want to be accurate, use the one inch mark and then add an yeah. inch to your dimension. That's always the best way to do it. So it'll be 23 and an eighth. 23 and a half plus an eighth. I thought you said it was two baby lines. 22 and a half plus two babies. Okay, 24 and a quarter. Yeah, there we go, now we're flush. So you gotta put a level on it, and then we'll have to screw that. 
Um, yep. Okay. Are you mic'd up or am I? Just... Yeah, I am. Okay. So the grill, the grill is 40, uh, the grill is a 42 inch grill. So that insert is behind us here. So that insert is 45 and a quarter is what the inset depth is. Uh, and because we're doing concrete countertops, I, want to add it to, I wanted to add some bracing. So the, con so the countertop is gonna terminate right here. So what we're gonna do is put a piece of plywood and cut this and so That's for a form. Actually, how are we gonna be able to do that? Oh yeah, because the it's gonna have to come back like this and yep. over here. Because yep. the depth, the depth is not this full depth. <coughs> so we're putting a brace here and a brace here. And because this, see this is a little bit lower, the face of the face plate of this is lower, so we need to have an eighth inch poking up here like, like so. So this is nice and level. So our countertop is gonna go, it's gonna basically U-shape. So the countertop is gonna go here, come back here and then the same thing over here and then go that, go that way because we're doing concrete i wanted to have some you know because there will be some flex in this until it hardens we need to make sure we brace more than we normally would it's gonna be the best diy home outdoor kitchens around these parts <laughs> i just imagine imagine we had this video to watch how much faster we would be at this you know we have to figure everything out the whole way through yeah. strong it's good all right cool we should really do a full sheet out here right and then whatever's left this way all right so we got to figure that this way. <laughs> 20 inches from this face here yep okay Move that right about there. Keep going, huh? Okay, that's 18. Okay, that's another quarter inch. All right, let's see what our bracket looks like. <clears throat> Those have to go, and then we should have about an inch, right? Well, there it needs to come out a little more, so it needs to go out to like 21 inches. to go this way or we can put a put a screw yeah a nailer on this on, on the face of this and then, then we have something to screw into here yeah and we just leave it I think that'd be the idea to put something on this yep perfect There it goes. Okay. 
smooth. <laughs> I should have, should be a crust. The face yep. frame should be out a quarter inch from there. Okay. And that's what we got, a quarter inch. So what we're gonna do to make this work, I'm gonna cut a piece of that black for the inside. The backer. Aluminum. And then pinch. Yep. So we need to take this totally off because we need to open this cabinet and get in here. They're from ironsupports.com. Right they're really there. not that, but they're like 65 bucks a piece. They're super easy to make. You ready? Yep. Jeez. That wasn't very good. That's not going anywhere. No, no. But I mean, if we just put two by four right here in, in the middle between them, I guess that we were. I was yeah. hoping we were sticking out past enough that we could. Put one out here. I mean, we can put it wherever we want, but yeah. I think just that little bit, a little yeah. three quarter here. Mm -hmm. That'll do the trick for sure. How does that work? Well, you've, this is the top of the form, so this black edge is revealed. You see this? Yeah, that's what you're saying. With the uh, that's that's what tile, because that's what you screed to the top of, because it's probably meant to yeah. have a backsplash to yeah. hide that. We might have to do a backsplash. Do you have the uh, blade in your pocket? I don't th I think this one we're gonna have to do with the grinder, because we have this angle. Mm, I don't think we need any rings. This one. It's been a lot. Okay. There we go. And we can do cut this with a grinder and then we can scribe this one. Slice it so it it's nice and clean. Yeah, this is perfect. 12 inches off of Evo. Yeah. You can turn it on over here and sit down there and cook. You got your Benny on Oh yeah, yeah, a little hibachi. I think I'm gonna put subwoofers, those in ceiling subwoofers up in the corners. Uh-huh. And then probably do some outdoor speakers pointing this way. And then four pointing out of the pool. Yeah. TV right here. Yeah. Be good for a temporary house. This fan is awesome. Yeah. We need more lights though, I think. Is that, is that the only thing we're waiting for? Is just the one? Yeah. Because remember you said, well, I'll order two just in case. I ordered three. 
Oh, you heard. All right, so we're at the point where we've got the Evo hole laid out. So now I'm gonna show you how we did it. Um, it was kind of tricky because we have some, some uh, pieces that run this way, some braces that have to catch this edge, but you have to have the round hole right on the money. So what we did is flipped it upside down and we traced, we, we measured so that we were dead center. And then our reveal, what we wanted was this here, this little radius, how it dies into a little flat. We wanted that to be, which is where we are, just like that. So it, it finishes out with this installed. It finishes out with the face of the cabinet just covering, well, this, this is how much reveal we'll have. We'll have about an eighth of an inch of this stainless reveal. And then the countertop comes out another inch, which ends up being where this will have about an eighth inch of reveal as well. And we, we looked online, some installations were where the counter was like, or the cabinet face was way here, and this kind of went off into nowhere. And we didn't like that, so this is this is how we came up with things. So, got that all set, both sides, the, so the reveal is even. And then we took and used our pencil, and we scribed the ID or the OD of this diameter that you see in here. And what that diameter is is that slips into that drip ring right there for all the drippings. So then we took this off after we traced that. And then we took the drip ring. <clears throat> and then we flipped that over so that the, we had an even spacing for this is our, the line we traced. Now, this gasket goes on this drip ring, so you, you have to leave. There's an eighth of an inch for the gasket, so we just had to measure so it's an eighth inch off this line. And then what I did was I traced this outside diameter. I used, uh, had a little block of wood and a pencil and I traced that so we were uh, square with the, with the table or the countertop. And now, because this has a lip, this has a 5 16 lip, what we wanted was this, this diameter that we actually cut to be about an eighth inch bigger aside than this diameter. So what I did was, we made a, um, now that we know where our center line is, we traced that, we laid out center line, which is right where that screw hole was, drilled the hole here, and then screwed that flat bar, used the screw to screw that flat bar, then I drilled the hole for the pencil right there, and then we used it like a trommel all the way around and scribed our actual cut line, which is right here. So now when we pour this and we finish out the concrete, that'll set in and, and it'll, self, it'll be like a self-rooming sink where it'll set into the top and, and it'll cover our, our, uh, our form line with a, the little bit of overhang. And there's actually a, a ceiling ring on the, on, the, um, on the underside of that so grease and stuff doesn't run underneath. So anyway, that's how we did it. So now we can start cutting. This, this door face is kind of funky, so we have to push in because it's warped out. Okay, you good? Yeah. Okay. No going back now, Mormon.
hit. Oh, there we go. So now it's just got a tuck under here. There it is. Look at that. Yeah, that's true. It did that, does that on the other. So that's why they poke it out. It should be, maybe. It looks a little tall, doesn't it? It's an inch. Are we sitting on the bracket still? No, we're sitting on this cut here. So an inch oh, above an this. Inch above, yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. I'm looking at I'm looking at it versus this, not that. Yeah, we're actually an inch and a sixteenth. Just the bracket. We gotta push it back. There we go. All right. All right. Now we should be an inch. Yeah. Exactly an inch. <laughs> 